Since I am mainly looking at video games that may be suitable for people who have never really played video games before, I thought it might be time to look back at the discoveries and moments and more associated with specific games I've played in my life. This is a series I'm calling Gaming Memories. I'm sure a number of you looking at the title are saying, Countdown? What is that? I'm not sure if I've heard of that game. And yes, the discussion of retro gaming will include the title game in a broader context. Well, let's start at the beginning, when I was very young. Countdown is a point-and-click adventure game released in 1990, where you play as the protagonist Mason Powers. He is a CIA agent who has been accused of murdering his supervisor, Frank McBain. He has been locked away in a remote asylum known as the Sanctuary and has lost his memory. It is up to you to escape the asylum, regain your memories, and figure out what's really going on by indulging in the typical adventure game mechanics like exploration, picking up and using items, solving puzzles and mazes, talking to people, you get the picture. I have positive memories of playing this game in my childhood. I remember sitting around with my cousins and my parents and my older brother as we all watched each other play. Apparently, one of my cousins was seemingly obsessed with the opening section of a game that involves escaping the asylum, which resulted in him apparently drawing maps, which surely featured the doors that were opened or closed, locked or unlocked, the items, mazes and so on. Despite that, he never escaped mostly because it turns out Mason has to have specific information before we can leave. Mason, the place was creepy and crawling with guards, just get the fetch out of there! But easily the most memorable part of the game were the flashbacks that would occur when you used the look function on specific objects. There's a flashback which shows the culprit entering Frank's office. Frank shouts, Go! Go! But he gets shot which shocks Mason. Frank's final words before he dies are GET SCORPIO! That scene never left our minds. When I was little, my older brother and I would stumble around the house and imitate Frank saying GET SCORPIO! Hey, we were young, okay? My dad did manage to get a walkthrough for the game, more on that later, where he managed to get out of the asylum, progressed some more, and then got stuck. And after that, we never played Countdown again. In fact, we probably forgot about it. Until... It was definitely during a gym class in early high school where I was waiting for my turn or something. I just happened to remember the game Countdown, the title, what it was vaguely about, and possibly even the Get Scorpio moment. Almost the moment I get home from school, I ask Dad if we can get Countdown working again. On that contemporary computer, it took quite a while, but it was worth it. I felt compelled to play the game properly, escaping, regaining the memories, and actually completing the game. That's right! After all those years, I managed to complete the game, see the ending and the credits. But it has to be said, getting the game to work at first wasn't the only struggle. What I mean by that is, it has to be said that Countdown has barely aged well by today's standards. The attempts to seemingly make the game look realistic even for 1990 means the graphics don't stand the test of time, compared to something more artistic like, say, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. There is barely any music in the game, save for a rock tune that plays at the opening and ending of the game, and the sound is repetitive, especially Mason's footsteps. with the general exception being the creepy screaming <coughs> and laughing. <coughs> but most of all, it's the mostly vague gameplay, which is more challenging and frustrating than it probably should be. That pixel there is a key? I have to remember to keep a save file and be patient with my timing to avoid guards? Okay, that aforementioned walkthrough was used to complete the game. But it didn't spoil the story, which is easily one of the game's more positive aspects. Because of that, it was worth going back to replay the game after completion just for the sake of it. Now for the retro gaming part of this gaming memories discussion. I think it was that sudden urge to rediscover Countdown back in early high school that prompted me to discover or rediscover old games. I played more of the DOS and console games from my childhood and realised how fun they were and probably still are. I took more of an interest in games that existed during or before my childhood that I never really played before. I played very few Super Nintendo or SNES games growing up and now it's one of my favourite systems ever due to fairly recent discoveries of games like Super Metroid, The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, Super Mario RPG, Earthbound, Chrono Trigger and more. It is fairly easy to be biased towards older games 
when it seems like the contemporary gaming scene may not carry the spark or magic that probably existed back then. However, I mentioned before that Countdown is far from perfect, and is a game from its time that is hard to run on modern computers, as well as hard to complete due to its relative lack of coherence that the best adventure games or games in general have. But I definitely have feelings of nostalgia for it. Whether it was the childhood moments of playing it with other people, as well as mimicking the Get Scorpio moment, not to mention the rediscovery of it in early high school gradually leading to me appreciating retro games a lot, the game Countdown will always, in the broader context of my life, be part of my gaming memories.